Hi everyone, I am Prithivi and I shall explain about the one mesh stress. One mesh stress is a very important quantity in the design of ductile materials. You can see its presence in failure theories, classical plasticity, fatigue models, etc. Before explaining about the one mesh stress, I shall very briefly explain some of the basic concepts needed in this video. On to the left, we have the 3D state of stress at a point which is represented by a matrix as shown. Any quantity, stress, strain or strain energy density could be decomposed into two parts based on their contribution to volume change and shape change which is also shear. Stress is decomposed into hydrostatic and deviatoric components whereas strain energy density is decomposed as volumetric and distortion energy components. The shape change quantities will be of interest to us. Lastly, we have the stress invariants which remain constant with respect to any coordinate system. For deviatoric stress tensor, we have J1, J2 and J3 as invariants. J1 represents the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix. J2 represents the sum of principal minors and J3 represents the determinant of the sigma deviatoric matrix. Of all, J2 will be of interest to us. I know that was quick, but I believe this would be sufficient to get the main idea of one mesh stress. But if you'd like more details, please find some links in the description section. With that background, let me explain the motivation behind defining one mesh stress. So, most of our experimental data like stress strain curves or fatigue data are obtained from dog bone specimen testing which happens to have an uniaxial state of stress. On the contrary, the real world scenarios may not be uniaxial. Many of them will have a multiaxial state of stress as shown. Now, in order to make design decisions, we have to compare the multiaxial stress to the experimental data which cannot be done directly. So, we first obtain an equivalent uniaxial stress state from the multiaxial stress state which will allow us for an easy comparison. This equivalent stress here is called as the one mesh stress. The next question is how do we make this conversion as these are two different quantities. We need a basis to make the comparison and it is done by using distortion energy. Energy being a scalar makes things easier. When you solve the distortion energy equivalence, you get the expression for the one mesh stress and it's quite complicated. Let's forget about the equation and let me give you an insight into this. The expression for one mesh stress is derived based on the assumption of isotropic behavior and which actually makes the one mesh stress a scalar quantity. Here, I have shown the one mesh stress in direction 3 but I could have also shown in 1 or 2, it doesn't matter. Lastly, I would also like to show you some of the other quantities related to one mesh stress. Shown here is an infinitesimal cube with respect to the principal axis and this phase here is called the octahedral plane. If you calculate the resultant shear stress along this plane, which is also called as the octahedral shear stress, you will see that it miraculously relates to the one mesh stress and also the J2 invariant. You might have seen many terminologies such as maximum distortion energy theory, one mesh theory, octahedral shear stress theory, J2 plasticity. Essentially everything means the same. Thank you for your attention and I'd be very grateful if you could share this video with others.